So reading 15 again on supply and demand analysis but now from the perspective of the firm. What we did in the last class was the theory of the consumer. So we studied the demand side. So in your uh, supply and demand curve we basically went through an elaborate exercise where we came up with the demand curve. Today we are studying the theory behind the supply curve. Where does the supply come from? It comes from firms. So we are going to look at it, look at the su uh, supply curve from the perspective of the firms. Uh, from a firm perspective, I'm just. I think this was a good summary in the introduction. So what will we do today? We'll uh, talk about the different kinds of profit. So there is economic profit, accounting profit, the concept of economic rent. So we need to understand these reasonably well. Then we'll talk about revenue, the various costs and things like break-even analysis, shutdown points and so on. Okay, so a fair amount of detail with regards to how firms decide what to produce. Obviously, to understand how much a firm produces, we need to understand what the objective of a firm is. And when you are asked what is an objective of a firm, you get two or three correct answers or two or three answers. Some people will say the objective of a firm is to maximize profits, okay, which is reasonably correct. Another term that you will hear is that people, the, the objective of a firm is to maximize shareholder value. Okay, the way you reconcile this is generally if you speak to an economist, he will talk about maximizing profits and he when he says maximizing profits he isn't talking about accounting profits that you see in the income statement of a financial report an economist talks about maximizing economic profit which we will discuss in detail shortly the way you can reconcile this maximizing economic profit with what a finance person will say what will a finance person say that the objective of a firm is to maximize shareholder value not hugely important for this particular topic but I think as finance professionals it's, un it's good to understand why and how we can reconcile these two statements. Obviously when we talk about profits we are not sure what the profits will be. There is uncertainty and there is riskiness associated with profits. So while we would like to maximize profits we also want to minimize the riskiness or the uncertainty associated with future profits and very simplistically put if you try and combine those two concepts maximizing profits or increasing profits and at the same time reducing the volatility or the riskiness associated with profits you combine those two together and you make a statement that you want to maximize shareholder value this we will come back to later when we talk about equity but for now, when we talk about the objective of a firm in economics, we will generally talk about maximizing profit. And again, when we talk about profit, the default or the assumption is economic profit, not accounting profit. And that should be easy to remember because the topic we are doing right now is economics. Okay. Now, having talked about economic profit and accounting profit, since we've not done financial reporting and analysis yet, let us just very briefly define what accounting profit means. Accounting profit in simplistic terms is the profit that you will see in an uh, income statement of a company. So companies prepare income statements or in some countries they are referred to as profit and loss statements based on accounting standards. And again simplistically there those income statements account for what's called explicit costs or generally they refer to explicit costs. So for example if you are an entrepreneur running your own business and you are paying yourself let's say 50,000 a year whereas your market value as a let's say engineer is 100,000. As far as the accounting statement is concerned if you are paying yourself 50,000 that's what will show up as a cost as your salary and when we calculate our accounting profit it will be based on that salary whereas when we look at economic cost then the economic cost is really hundred thousand which I will discuss in more detail but I think the simple point right now is accounting profit generally takes into account only the explicit costs 
and it doesn't take into account implicit opportunity cost okay so that's the quick definition of accounting profit there is a whole reading in fra where we will discuss this in detail next we have this term called economic profit which just to understand the terminology right now is also called abnormal profit or supernormal profit and as i mentioned earlier when we say profit we mean economic profit in this study session or in this topic now what is economic profit economic profit is uh, there are multiple definitions and two that you must know first economic profit is your accounting profit minus any implicit opportunity costs another way of looking at it is that economic profit is equal to your total revenue minus total economic costs a simple example here might be that let's say that you are running a facility where the warehouse is owned by you and hence you are not paying any rent for that warehouse if you are not paying any rent does that show up as a explicit cost in your accounting statement it does not because you are not paying any rent for that warehouse however you could rent that warehouse for $10000 a month if you want it so that is referred to as a opportunity cost and when you talk about economic profit you subtract that opportunity cost so let's look at a few examples what we are going to do do here is come up with economic profit given accounting profit let's say that you run a small company so you have this startup company where the accounting profit is 300000 and as discussed this accounting profit is calculated based on accounting rules in the country where you operate okay as uh, as i mentioned earlier let's say that you have to run your own business the salary that you pay yourself is 100000 less than what you could otherwise earn if you were to work for say a large multinational company given your qualification you could actually earn 100000 more than what you are paying so does that 100000 show up as a wage expense no it does not but is it an implicit opportunity cost yes. it is okay let's say that you have invested 1.5 million dollars in this business and you could get a return had you invested this 1.5 million in another business of similar risk you could get a return of 200000 so that is also a implicit cost because rather than investing that money somewhere else you have invested it in your business so there is a 1.5 million investment and the return that you are giving up is 200000 so these two items are referred to as implicit opportunity costs and notice what is the economic profit the economic profit is zero because when you take your accounting profit subtract all the implicit opportunity costs what you are left with is zero your economic profit is zero do you remember the equation from the last page that your economic profit is equal to accounting profit minus minus the implicit opportunity cost so that is zero you should also understand this term called normal profit normal profit is the accounting profit which just covers implicit costs so in this case what's your normal profit the normal profit is the 300000 so it is the economic it is the accounting profit which covers your implicit opportunity costs okay let me just uh, do this other side also and then i will give a little more detail on normal profit economic profit and accounting profit okay so the example on the left side of this slide talks about a startup company what if you are dealing with a large publicly traded company this is something you will see here and then something you will see again in the equity segment when we talk about large publicly traded companies the cost of equity is the implicit cost what is the cost of equity right now just take it as a given 
when people invest in a large company so when you buy shares of a large company there is a certain return that you require and we'll discuss this in the equity segment just now take it as a given that let's say that the total equity investment in a given company is 18.75 million mm means million and investors require a 8% return when they invest in that company how we come up with these numbers is covered in detail later in the course okay so if investors require a 8% return if you do 8% of 18.75 you will get 1.5 million so that's the return that investors require for large publicly traded company this would be the implicit opportunity cost okay because everything else you can consider is already covered in accounting related um, so in the income statement and so on but this 1.5 million is not this is your implicit opportunity cost now let's say that a large publicly traded company makes a accounting profit of 2 million okay so what is the economic profit the formula is the same the economic profit is your accounting profit minus the in the opportunity cost or the implicit opportunity cost which is how much 1.5 million and therefore your economic profit in this case is 0.5 million and normal profit is 1.5 million so why is normal profit 1.5 million remember this is the what was your total accounting profit mm -hmm. so you can say your accounting profit is this total amount which is 2 million what is the part of the accounting profit so out of this 2 million 1.5 million is covering the the implicit opportunity cost so that is your normal profit and then what remains the 0.5 million that is the this is this part the 0.5 million is the economic profit so again the accounting profit then you can see is the in in our simple example accounting profit was 2 million the economic profit was how much 0.5 million and the normal profit was 1.5 million so you need to know these relationships so again just to hammer this in and using some exhibits from the curriculum i've already shared this so uh, accounting profit is economic profit plus normal profit from that you can simply derive uh, if you are given the accounting profit and the normal profit you can find out the economic profit and how does the curriculum summarize this if your accounting profit is greater than normal profit is this a good sign this is a very good sign this means that your economic profit is positive so the firm is actually creating value so so that's a good thing and the market value of the firm will go up this will be a positive effect this also profit yeah okay normal profit would mean what that simply the accounting profit is covering the implicit opportunity cost so that's normal so what is more than that is super normal and that's where the name comes from accounting profit equals normal profit this might happen in a stable highly competitive industry that we will study later in this case the economic profit is zero and the market value of a firm is not impacted and finally if accounting profit is not is 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 less than normal profit what does this mean that the accounting profit isn't even covering all our implicit opportunity costs clearly <coughs> that's a bad thing so in economic terms our profit is negative and this is actually destroying shareholder value if you look at it from a shareholder perspective we are then saying that the profits that we are generating are not even covering the return that shareholders demand and just as a side remark this material was not covered in the economics curriculum until last year and obviously now that a uh, uh, charter holder has written this material he is tying it much more closely to finance concepts that you will see later so i think this is a good enhancement to the course 
economic rent this again is a important term so let's understand what economic rent means and then look at some practical examples if you have a situation where a given resource or a good is in fixed supply now it can be a commodity like uh, let's say gold which we are talking about down here or it might be a service offered by a highly skilled uh, let's say professional now if you have a, a resource or a highly skilled professional the supply curve for that resource or good is going to be very inelastic okay so the supply curve let's just take an extreme and say that the supply curve is completely inelastic when you have a supply curve that is completely inelastic let's say that initially actually a quick point when the supply curve is completely inelastic how do you determine the price of that commodity it's based on the demand curve right so if initially we are at this demand curve d1 and then for some reason there is a big increase in demand okay if there is a big increase in demand the price will go from p1 over here to p2 and what is the additional profit the quantity here is q so the additional amount of money made is this this distance so p2 minus p1 multiplied by q did the resource have to do any extra effort for this no so the resource without having to do anything just because the demand went up the there is money to be made and that money that is made because demand goes up and the resource did not have to do anything uh that that is called economic rent so the example here is market price is higher than what is required to bring the resource to market so if this resource is let's say a super qualified actor of some sort and for some reason now the demand for that actor's movie suddenly goes up he makes a lot of money he might be willing to work for a small amount of money but now that the demand for him has gone up without him having to do anything else he makes a lot of money the example yeah so this is in the gold market down here so in the gold market the supply of gold over the last few years actually this was between 2006 and 2008 actually almost flat so marginally lower but effectively the supply of gold did not change so effectively that can be modeled as a practically vertical supply curve in elastic but what happened to the demand of curve the demand of gold over the same time period if you look at the demand in 2006 it was about 3.4k and then from there it went to 3.8 which was a 11% increase in demand and over the same period look at what happened to the price of gold it went up by 44% okay so that increase is called economic rent even stock that we can discuss over break oh, that's a tough one okay that's a interesting point but requires some thought okay so now let's look at the analysis of revenue cost and profits so this actually is a slide that at some point you need to memorize i won't read it for you but if you are watching this video you just pause it and read this a few times it's been taken straight out of the curriculum if you found this clip interesting and informative please visit my website www.arifirfanullah.com here you will find a tremendous amount of useful material right here in the 2011 cfa video lecture series you will find the entire level 1 curriculum for free and most of the material here is still relevant so this is worth looking at the 2012 video lecture series covers both level 1 and level 2 these lectures are available for a fee and uh, finally down here uh, financial management at iba here you will find my lectures at iba 
for a course on financial management. Plus, you'll find lots of useful spreadsheets that can help you with financial modeling. So again, please visit www.rfirfanullah.com. Thank you.